Welcome to Hard Shots by Six Pack Philosophy. In this episode, we're discussing adoption and the state as it relates to recent events by our uh, friend of the show, Neil Patrick Carrick. Uh, he's been on a couple of times before. Uh, in the past, we've been talking about marriage and the state, uh, but now we've kind of got a, a different topic. Um, Neil has been on the ground for years, um, working to do what he believes is right and um, trying to bring attention to the ways in which... Um, people aren't able to do the things that they should be able to do. At least that's my takeaway from it. Well, I guess that's a takeaway from it. Absolutely. Uh, uh, so, so Neil's going to come, he's going to talk to us this time about adult adoption, yes. particularly in, uh, uh, in, in Michigan. And he's going to, I think he's going to talk a little bit about the role of the state and the local government in, uh, in passing these laws. So uh, we already have Neil on the line. We do. We so do. Let's, let's, let's bring, bring him, him up here. And Neil, are you out there, brother? I am. How are you guys? We are doing great. Absolutely I am. Absolutely. I am so glad to have you back on the show again. Uh, we, we are here waiting for you to enlighten us on this yes. topic a little bit. Exactly. How did you get in trouble this time? Neil? <laughs> <laughs> well, this is, I'm not going to go through the whole story, but in about, um, 1999, 2000, um, I was a pastor of a church in Baltimore, Maryland. Um, I ended up taking in a, um, 16 year old that was um, had a one-year-old daughter um, she had just recently moved to Baltimore from Louisiana um, she's what she had basically one of those stories that you kind of shake in your legs about when you hear because she had gone from one place to another to another to another never really had kind of settled down as a result of her family's background um, I took her in um, fought really hard to become her foster parent or her guardian and the state of Maryland wouldn't let me but in the end a judge kind of pulled um, a joker from his deck and emancipated her um, at 16. Um, I moved later on to Michigan and decided I wanted to adopt her. Um, in 2007 um, I went through the process of adopting her as an adult. Um, that's about 10 years ago and um, she was 22 then. And the state said, well, you know, um, adoption of an adult is pretty simple. All you got to do is um, ask for it to be done in the local co county court. Um, the whole process involves basically notifying the birth parents on the birth certificate, um, but they don't really have a say. You just have to notify them. Um, the adult that's going to be adopted has to consent. And um, they have to basically check you out and make sure that nothing's involved like fraud. Um, in case somebody was trying to do it as a result of that or trying to get around the law um, in regards to something like um, sexual abuse or something similar. Um, but it's really limited. Um, it's not like adopting a child, obviously. There's a state interest in that. Um, anybody would argue there's an interest in protecting the child. Um, the adoption of, a, of an adult is very different, um, pretty limited, what the state has to say. Now, by the way, almost every state in the union has these adult adoption laws. Um, you can look across the board and they're pretty much the same across the country. Um, if the person that's going to be adopted consents, the process is pretty limited. Um, I, I hate to bring this analogy up, which is pretty sad, but I'm going to bring it up anyway. Um, Charlie Manson went to jail for some of the most hideous crimes in the history of our country. He could get married, had no issue getting married. Um, pretty simple for a person who um, has done some hideous crimes to get married. If the person that is of age wants to marry them, they go through the process of getting married. But guess what? If you want to get adopted, if you have a, a sincere interest in doing it for all the right reasons, whether it was a stepchild that came of age or something like that, the county I lived in decided that they were going to make up rules out in air. And that's exactly what they did. So after I started the process, the, a local person said to me, here's our rules. And it had four or five rules in it that didn't make any sense. If you had done any of the following things, you could not adopt an adult. And I'm like going, well, I guess I'm out because I owe a little bit of money on child support. And they said, yep, don't even waste your time. And I had already had an appointment set up to see the judge, done the paperwork. And I'm reading them. And, I, and at the time, I didn't know much about the law at all. Um, fast forward to today, um, she's even been able to change her name with my last name. 
Um, she's pretty much considered my daughter under the law. A local family court judge accepted her as my daughter based upon a de facto rule. Um, haven't had any real issues. But when I went to go do it again, I, I said, I noticed anybody's changed the rules at all. It pretty much stays the same. And the state rules are pretty much what I described. A person wants to adopt an adult, they only got to do a couple things. You want to do it in Wayne County of Detroit, Michigan? Um, guess what? We got a whole bunch of new rules. And here's the magic question. Where did these rules come from? And who wrote them? Guess what? Nobody knows. Okay. <laughs> Sounds about right. Just, so just, just, just unbelievable. The legislature writes rules in code law, and a local court says, hey, we're going to make up our own. Okay. So, so your argument would be that the um, that that the county does not have the right to put laws on top of the the state. Yeah, it's it's actually you know a lot of people get upset when they hear the expression you know um, legislation from the bench. Well, this is beyond that. This, this is absolutely beyond. That. You don't even have a judge legislating here. You might have a secretary. You might have a general counsel for the court. You might have a judge that sits as an administrative judge. Who knows who made up these rules? Nobody knows. This isn't legislation by the bench. This is simply we decided to become our own legislative body. Yeah, legislative I'm, by committee. Yeah. Now, and, and it, go ahead. You say that we, we don't know who, who wrote these rules. Wouldn't this have to be some kind of, uh, you know, small legislative body? I'm, I'm thinking like a city council. Obviously, this is county and not city, but like a, a county commissioner's court, or is it not even even something like that? No, it's, it's really interesting. If you look at the way the law is set up, in most places you have, you know, a probate judge, a family court judge, a civil court judge, a criminal court judge, assign certain cases based upon what kind of court it is. This, this is kind of quasi-unknown, if you will. And whoever wrote these rules probably was somebody like the general counsel or the administrative representator, representation for that court. Or maybe um, in Michigan, we have this thing called the front of the court, which is basically an administrative body that does things like child support and family court stuff. Somebody within one of those offices that had to write these packages for who can get in to do certain things like adult adoption wrote these rules and the rules aren't based upon the state law as far as i can see and and, and there's no state interest here in other words in order for a law to be written or in order for somebody to keep you from having one of your civil rights there has to be a defined state interest what's the state interest and in to keeping somebody from being able to have a person as their child, because quite frankly, there's not a um, tax or family court. Or, there, there's no real good reason here to say we're going to stop your civil rights because we have an interest here made up by somebody who sits behind a desk that we don't even know their name of 25, 35 years ago. So you say there's no good reason. Have they even attempted to give you any reason as to... Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. That's the funny part. So I went back and forth with the general counsel, um, the administrator of the court, and even the um, chief judge for Wayne County. And you know, I've got probably six letters from the, the general counsel for that particular court. And he says, in the best interest of the parties, meaning the best interest of the person that's adopting and the person that's being adopted. And here's the issue. They have no right in the say of that. It's really bizarre. If you get married, for instance, does a judge get to say, hey, I can decide whether or not you're going to marry somebody because it's a state interest. No, a judge doesn't, <laughs> a judge doesn't do that. A, a county clerk, if you go up to a county clerk and you say, hey, I want to be able to do something. Um, can I do it? They don't go, well, you know, let me check my records to see if there's anything I don't like about you. It simply doesn't work that way. Yeah, there, there's, there's no justification for them to do it. Yeah, I don't see any statute, uh, statutory rights there to, to do that. So I'm a little concerned about it. Uh, yeah, I, I got I to gotta be honest with you, with you, Neil. I'm, I'm a little mixed here on my feelings. Uh, part of me says... Uh, 
you, you know, that the, the government has no right to interfere with that. And the other part of me looks at it and says, you know what? It's it, it's small government. It's the government the closest to you that's making this decision. And uh, I don't know. I, I, I'm, I'm, I find myself a little bit um, lost on this one. Okay. Um, well, I, I would tend to agree with you that, like, if you were going to look at it as a, you know, local versus state versus federal issue, I kind of would agree. Here, here's the, if you will, kind of the, in a nutshell, what the problem is. The state law that was put in place was basically done because of what we call um, adoption by convenience or adoption by set parent. Um, if you know what either one of those are, you would kind of understand the reason that they wrote these laws. They weren't put in place literally to um, prohibit adoption. They were put in place to make it so that there was a standard so that people could do it with things like birth certificates because that that would be the that's the basic reason behind it okay well and, and let me ask this because i know a little bit about the laws for for local municipalities whether that's at the county precinct or city level versus state uh, uh laws here in texas but it may be set up different in and was it michigan right mm -hmm. yeah, yeah yeah in michigan um so the way the, the federal constitution set up and, and the model that people are most familiar with, as far as, you know, I'll, I'll even say the theoretical model or the intended model, is that uh, the federal government has allocated certain powers to itself and then said everything not allocated to us or prohibited to the states goes to the states. So everything left over goes to the states. The reserve powers. Yeah. Yes. But, and, and a lot of people because of that model make an assumption that that same thing would propagate down from the states but i can tell you at least in texas that is not the case and that is completely Even left specifically to, written so yeah and that is specifically left up to a state's constitution and in texas right. the state constitution says the state has all the power and municipalities get only the power specifically granted them by the state constitution and while right. some people may have an idea that they would like the local municipalities to have more power that's not constitutionally the case in texas yeah so do you know anything about michigan and whether michigan has de facto powers given to uh, municipalities or whether it has to be specified powers well it's actually mixed and you know, it, it, it depends on the type of laws you're talking about like for instance there's been a lot of y'all y'all have been experiencing this in texas kind of the same way that michigan has been experiencing it which is um Local municipalities putting, trying to put laws in place that are in regards to um, civil rights or laws protecting particular classes of people, um, like Dallas, say, for instance, or Houston protecting a, a group of people. And um, there's actually been a lot of talk of them trying to prevent municipalities in, in Michigan from writing laws um, regarding those issues. Okay, well... I, I, again, I'm, I'm still kind of uh, on the fence there, but I, 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 I think I would tend to, to, to err on the side of, of adults making their own decisions in this. And that, that, that's my question about this is, is, you know, why is a local municipality telling two adults they can't enter, enter into a contract together? That seems well, that's bizarre. actually what it is. But, but, I mean, Mike, I don't know if you if you kind of catch the gist of this. The, re the major reason why that they did this was um, step parent adoption and convenience adoption. Now, I'm, I'm going to tell you what step what adult excuse me what convenience adoption is. In a lot of states, especially southern eastern states, um, it was not unusual for African American families, Latino families, and and other ethnic families to do what's called convenience adoption, where basically they would take a kid in that was like, say, their nephew or their niece, et cetera, and raise them because something had happened to their parents or their parents got sick or parents died or something like that. And when they take those children in, they never would formally adopt them. And then when they get older, they have a problem with things like inheritance. That was the major reason. Now, inheritance is actually pretty easy to deal with um, in, in most places because of the way the tax codes are written now. But things like, say, birth certificates. The only way you're going to get a birth certificate changed is technically to do an adoption. So when you look at the federal versus state issue, you kind of have this issue. It's like, okay, how do we make it so that a state can ask another state to change 
a birth certificate. There's only one way, adoption. Well, and, and you, you kind of bring up a point I was actually about to ask about, and, and that is, okay, we, we, we can agree uh, fairly well that, that it's kind of absurd, uh, all the hoops that the, the local municipality is making people jump through in order to, to do what two consenting adults want to do in this case. Um, but, you know, then the question becomes, well, why do we care? And, and, you know, you mentioned inheritance and I was thinking, oh, okay, well, there's the thing. But as, as you mentioned, the tax laws are written in such a way. And, and even I would imagine a will could, could take care of most of this. That's right. And so That's the right. only thing that you've really kind of mentioned here is the way the government internally documents family trees. What real, what is there to gain in winning this fight? What are people worried about that, that will be changed if, if you can win this fight? Well, it's pretty simple. I, I, be, you know, to make it blunt, say for instance, if you have a person um, that was in a situation like I was in, um, when somebody says, "Well, I want to go, I want to go see my daughter in the hospital," or "I want to see my, want to be present for anything that has to do with my grandchildren," uh, in terms of what is um, legal access. Um, you know, you have what's called the next of kin rule. Mm. Um, if I'm not technically the next of kin of that person um, by adoption or legal status, um, then I lose all those privileges. And I'll, I'll give you a kind of a, a, a the really simplest answer. Um, say, for instance, my daughter dies tomorrow. She has she has three children right now. Um, she's pregnant as well. If I want to do anything on behalf of those children, legally right now, I have no say. And, and so those children will become court, wards of the state in theory, right? That's right. That's right. And, and technically under probate laws in states like Maryland and Michigan and, and other eastern states, especially that I'm aware of, um, they have what's called kinship laws. In, in Maryland, I could not have any say as being her guardian. In fact, I couldn't even attend court hearings on her behalf. I hired an attorney, everything. They wouldn't let me have even come into the courtroom because I was not kin. Because I was not kin, I couldn't protect her. Now, in Felicia's case, she had been physically, sexually, and mentally abused most of her life. When I hired an attorney for her, the state of Maryland threw that attorney out of the courtroom saying that they, that attorney did, could not represent her because of the conditions of, of, their, of them being hired by me. And as a result, she ended up in the jail with her one-year-old daughter um, because they didn't have any place to place her and she had not committed any crime. That's wow. how kind of ludicrous this is. Wow. You got states where you have 35, 4,000 kids sitting in foster care and those children of those children end up having just fall a line of continuous abuse where basically they get stuck in a family, they can never get out of that family, and once they get out when they're of age, they have nobody. That, and that, when somebody tries argument. to go in and help them, they are nobody to them still. Yes, sir. That, that's, a, that's a pretty powerful argument that you had there. Uh, I, I think we've pretty much covered this, and I, I don't know what answers we got in, got got through here as far as personal goes, but uh, but you know, it's we appreciate you coming on the show. I, I can tell you from my standpoint. I know Mike's kind of battling his local government versus yeah. versus big government thing, but uh, uh, I, I I personally say that you know I, I I lean toward personal liberty. That's why I consider myself more of a. Uh, a libertarian rather constitutionalist and, and make that differentiation and i think this is you know take it even closer than local government take it down to the individual i think this is a personal liberty issue and i'm, I'm rooting for you man well, and well i appreciate it. i mean I, I wanted to share this kind of a, this one little analogy with you imagine if you were that like you woke up tomorrow morning and somebody said to you before you go on a on a date you're going to have to get a permit to walk and you go, what? Well, we have a state interest in where you walk and who you are with. And you went, that's silly. Okay, I'll go get the permit. And then after you got the permit, they said, hey, 
I need you to get a permit before you enter the restaurant because the state has an interest of where you eat. Well, that's crazy, right? Well, okay, I'll get it anyway. Okay, now that you've got that, we need you to get a permit based upon whether or not you're going to have Chinese food or Kentucky Fried Chicken. What? Well, I'm drawing the line at the food. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I was okay with the rest of it, but if they tell me where I have to eat, we're drawing the damn line. Yeah. So here's the best one with the beer. Well, you're 21 years of age. In fact, you're 24. You served the United States military. And we've decided that it's probably not in the best interest of you to have a beer today. Sorry, permits denied. That's how no. it's revolution. <laughs> revolution. We're, we're, we're rising up. We're rising up. Yeah. We revolted right, over guys. tea before. We'll definitely <laughs> revolt over beer. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks a lot for your time. Greatly appreciate it. Hey, Hope y'all hey, have a great day. Thank you for coming on the show. Uh, always a friend of the show. We certainly do appreciate you. And, uh, you know, stay in touch with us, brother. Thank you so much for coming right. on, Neil. It was good to talk to you. All right. Good to talk to you guys. Have a great day. Bye you bye. too. Bye. All right. Well, what did we think? Uh, I, I thought it was interesting. <clears throat> Something that um, I don't know if it was better to actually talk about while we had Neil on the phone or not. Um, but something that I find really interesting that, that this kind of brings up is there are arguments against, well, against um, pushing power down to your local governments and in favor of keeping it at um, the biggest level possible. Not biggest as in more laws necessarily, um, but keeping it all at one level, that being the federal level. Um, you know, he mentioned these kind of, it sounded like in, in some ways unwritten, um, untraceable uh, laws, de facto laws, um, as far as these adoptions go that kind of seem to have no no bearing on anything. Yeah, I, I think I think what he was talking about it was was the fact that you know our court often operates on precedent, and uh, you know it sounded to me like precedent had been established, and then precedent had become case law in, in those areas. Mm -hmm. uh, that that was kind of my understanding of it. Um, so anyway, I think that it's it's interesting because this sort of exemplifies the arguments um, against pushing power down to the local level in that people can set precedent based on their own individual personal preferences of whether or not they like that particular individual. Um, and whereas at a federal level, it's all kind of anonymous and the argument being, and not that I necessarily agree with it, but the argument being that, um, with it being anonymous, it can be applied, uh, without bias. Yeah, uh, and, and my whole problem was, while I'm rooting for, for Neil, and I think in this situation, you've got a great situation, uh, I don't know what, what Michigan's Constitution says, mm -hmm. and, and, and being a kind of a constitutionalist, I look at it, I think I think it definitely falls under the reserve powers, so it mm -hmm. definitely falls right. under state powers, uh, but I don't know if Michigan allows uh, the, the local governments to do that, yeah. and if their Constitution is written in such a way that it pushes it down to the local levels, then they're they're, they're fully within the law. Yeah. If you have an out of control, uh, you know, district attorney or something there that that's, that's pushing pushing their own legislation, we have a different situation. Right. And and you know one one point on that is that again, I don't know Michigan's Constitution either, and I've seen some really poorly written state constitutions. Oh, yeah, I live yeah. in Texas, damn it. We have one <laughs> yeah. of those. Yeah. But. It would be a hard thing for me to imagine that unless there was complete incompetence in writing the thing, that Michigan would put laws on the books regulating this particular issue and then push it down to municipalities. Yeah, yeah. That's that's a yeah. that's really poor constitutional writing to, yeah. to you know. Which, which seems like something that, that's ridiculous, yeah. but but we know right. poor writing happens all the time. So. Right. Uh, you know, without without reading that, I can't make a constitutional judgment. I can make a philosophical mm -hmm. judgment and say, let two consenting adults do whatever the hell they right. want to. Yeah. yeah. Well, and, and that's where, um, you know, I made the argument of, as far as, you know, keeping laws at a, a federal level and whatnot. But I think the, the real solution is, like John said earlier, um, getting it down to the individual level. Yeah. And... You know, if it means that I have to fill out a form whenever I go to the hospital that says exactly who is and is not allowed to come and see me, 
Um, you know, if it means... Well, except, you know, what if you're not able to? Well, how about this? It's 2017, uh, and these all these hospitals are connected with databases that have nothing to do with the government on your medical history. Why not just put a little note in there? These people can see me, and then they pull it up on that database. Yeah. I understand yeah. the difficulties of that in the 1800s and, yeah. and having yeah, to do yeah, that. I yeah. get that. It's not the 1800s. Yeah, you write it like, you know, like you put your ice contacts into your phone when you're fine, but it's to be used in an emergency. You yeah. make that list ahead of time. I'm going to make that list and say that I, that I want the peace and quiet in the hospital. Nobody can visit me. Nobody. Okay. If I Except go, for hot nurses. Hot nurses yeah. can visit. Yeah, 18 yeah. to 30. Hot female nurses. Wow. Yeah. I want to get that clear now just yes. because I know, I know John was sending some like Damn muscle, right. muscle man stuff. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know exactly who would be giving you a sponge bath. That's yes. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I think we have covered this one, haven't I think we? We have, yeah. and I think we're getting a little off topic now. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> hey, hey, John, why don't you tell them how they can support the show if they want to? Absolutely. If you like this episode, go ahead and give us a heart, a like, uh, whatever your particular app or means of listening lets you do. If you want to hear more, give us a subscription. And if you want to know how you can help this show keep going, we're coming up on three years. I yep. want to see us do three more. Let's go for six. Uh, you can head over to patreon.com slash six pack philosophy yeah, where six, we have be perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, <anyway. laughs> where we have a wide range of ways that you can get involved in financially supporting us as well as get some cool listener perks. Yeah. Absolutely. So check that out. Super cool. Like we'll give you our new our broken microphone. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Maybe we should auction that off to the there list. You go. Yeah. Well I was kidding. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Well, we'll and make by, no promises and, on that. And, and, uh, by broken mic, they mean the microphone, not not me. No, we'll we auction him decided. off after six years. <laughs> That'll be the six-year prize. Anyway, uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in. As always, this is Hard Shots by Six Pack Philosophy. Don't forget, if you haven't already, to go back to our main feed, which is called Six Pack Philosophy, um, and subscribe there as well. So we got two feeds going on. And thank you guys so much for tuning in. By the way, we are also on YouTube, so don't forget to go subscribe there. You can watch us make funny faces during Absolutely. our videos. It's Absolutely. great. Um, thanks. Cheers. Bye. Cheers. Bye.